Attention all podcasts of the Solar Federation. We have assumed control. We have assumed control. We have assumed control. Welcome to the Intergalactic Boombox Year 2, bringing us in the dulcet tones of the Alcapella Symphony Orchestra. That was, that was amazing. My name is Kyle Bear, and I'm an L.A.-based voice actor, streamer, podcaster, big bald dude, bringing you geek pop culture news that I find interesting anyway. So thank you for donating a few minutes of your precious time for this opportunity to infotain you. This episode of the Intergalactic Boombox is sponsored by a myriad of corporate and ma and pop entities that simply don't exist. But if they did, we thank them. Bobcat Billabong's Foot Pudding. The Association of People Who Laugh at Inappropriate Times, and Tenacious Tommy's House of Uvulas. The question of the week. Does it bug you to see the same content, you know, like memes, short video clips, etc., across multiple social media platforms? Do you care? Or is it a great technique to get one's content seen in as wide a range as possible? Patrick Dunn says, wouldn't know. I can hardly reach double digits in anything I make. Boy, I know that feeling. A noble llama says, I generally post the same or similar thing across multiple platforms because it gives a larger surface area for an audience. I only really use a couple of platforms to consume media, so eh, it doesn't really bother me. Jasmine Sidney says, it does get old seeing the same joke like 15 times every day. Chelsea Simmons, if the meme is redone well and fits, fine, I guess. Just immediately dates your work, in my opinion. I will say that if I do see a meme on one platform and then somewhere else, I want to show somebody that same joke who isn't on the first platform I saw it on, does make it quicker and more efficient to get that meme into their eyes and ears. You know what I mean? No question. Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, the Me Too movement. You know, Hollywood is never short on scandal. Ezra Miller who we will all see in the upcoming Flash film, got busted for disorderly conduct and harassment at a bar in Hawaii recently. The fans are already petitioning to get Amber Heard removed from Aquaman 2, with rumors that her screen time's been drastically reduced anyway. What move, if any, will Warner Brothers consider on these properties? All these loose actor canons, if you will. Do real-life incidents involving celebrities taint your enjoyment of their roles in film and TV? You ever boycott a show or a movie? For me, if they're just a douche to people, I can usually separate that. It's hard for me to ever be excited for any Joss Whedon project again. I think it's sad that Martin Scorsese is one of the world's greatest directors and thinks superhero films don't qualify as real cinema. He's entitled to his opinion, and that's fine. And he's still a great filmmaker. I can't listen to Bill Cosby's classic stand-up. I heard it for decades, loved it for decades. I'm Team Johnny, but honestly, both could use a lot of therapy. I want to know, whose Hollywood projects do you avoid like the plague due to some past indiscretions? Blow up my Twitter, at BoomboxPod. I heard a great analogy from the Podcasting 2.0 show this week discussing the problem of onboarding, a.k.a. getting new people to adopt this new way of thinking, this new podcasting ecosystem that integrates crypto versus a Patreon-type model. A clip that they played say, think of it like tokens at an arcade. You exchange your currency for a different type of currency, and they have a value attached. Or think of it as tickets at a carnival. A U.S. dollar is worth $1.20 in Canada. The smallest units of Bitcoin is the Satoshi. A U.S. dollar is worth roughly 3,000 Satoshis. Podcasting 2.0 apps like Fountain are helping people interpret all this stuff by letting you click on the amounts to see it displayed in either crypto or dollars. Another great example I heard was thinking of value for value in terms of likes on social media. You are telling the content creator that you enjoy their content. Likes are currency, not monetarily, but they do have value. And unlike Patreon, you get to decide how much you think the value you have taken from a podcast is. It could be way less or way more, or just about the same as a preset amount. But you hold all the power. Your hard-earned money leaves your wallet when you choose to. Newpodcastapps.com. Check it out. If you're wondering who'll be playing the Grand Poobah of the Dune universe in the sequel, wonder no longer. Christopher Walken will be Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV. 
Sure, his mannerisms are the stuff of parody, but the intensity and passion of those performances are legendary. Already, I'm envisioning this character stopping the film dead in its tracks to tell a completely mundane story with no relevance, but extremely compelling. Oi, 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 oi. Oh, hey, Shiggles, what's up? Hey, why not a full-on dance number? Huh? I mean, I've seen him bust a move on that old Fat Boy Slim video, eh? Oh, uh, yeah, that's true, but y- y- you gotta walk without rhythm, otherwise the worms will get you. Yeah. Walking in a desert wonderland. <laughs> yeah, exactly, gets. <laughs> <laughs> you know what June needs? What's that? More cowbell. Ah, I knew it. Oh, hey, look, it's Asmer, the movie-quoting alien. Hey, Asmer, what do you think about Christopher Walken joining the cast of Dune 2? There are 17 different things guys can do when he lies uh-huh. to give himself away. Yeah. Guy's got 17 pantomimes. Okay. Woman's got 20. Guy's got 17. But True, true romance. romance! And now, little man... I give the watch to you. And now, Avatar, The Way of Water trailer reaction. Great graphics. So, is that actual gameplay, or, uh... I checked out the first two of the new Spotify-exclusive audio drama, Batman Unburied, and it's really good stuff. Winston Duke, from Black Panther is portraying Bruce Wayne, and in this story, he is a forensic pathologist. And the villain is a nice, creepy Sam Witwer as serial killer The Harvester. We all expect Batman to rule the box office, but how about podcasting? Looks like this new scripted tale has actually bumped Joe Rogan off the top spot, according to Spotify's podcast charts. (laughs) Of course, that's a win-win for them. It's their shows. But I gotta say, it's really interesting to see the shift in podcast consumers in terms of the type of content that rises to the top, you know? It's like we're seeing this new golden age of radio. And that makes me a happy, happy guy. Hey, audio drama studios, there's a whole talent pool of voice actors who would really be good in this kind of storytelling, just saying. Got a PS4 or an Xbox One, and you're totally psyched for Gotham Knights? Hey, out of luck, Bobaloo. Warner Brothers Interactive just made the announcement that the new title will only be on PS5, Xbox X, and S, and PC. Oh, but why? Oh, hey, Drew Grime for the Drew Drew Grime Grime, True True Crime Crime Podcast. Podcast that totally doesn't exist. I think, therefore I be. Am. Therefore, I am. But what your viewers really want to know is... Uh, listeners. Why would Gotham Knights not be available on last-gen console? Press release doesn't cite any particular reason, but they did say they are all about providing players with the best possible gameplay experience. Could it be to force consumers into buying next-gen consoles? It's always about money, man. But the consoles Gotham Knights will be available on are still in short supply. Quite the conundrum. Hopefully that won't be the case this fall. Gotham Knights drops on October 25th. Just check the link in the show notes for the latest gameplay demo. That reminds me of this unsolved mystery surrounding Danny the Demo Slayer. Don't you mean Demon Slayer? Is that a typo on the script? I don't tell you how to podcast. Don't tell me how to promo. Excuse me. Danny the Demo Slayer was your typical lovable sedentary neckbeard. Uh Uh-huh. Smelling of cheetahs and Red Bull. Controller in hand, Hmm. constantly button smashing in an eternal state of bliss. He and his long-distance girlfriend, whom he had never met in person, Barbara Beta Tester, continued their online multiplayer romance, squashing bugs from the latest, soon-to-be-released games. Alas, one day, the power was cut. The cacophony of lights dimmed to pitch black. What sinister force intervened? Sounds like uh, someone just forgot to pay the electric bill. Nobody asked you, Hubert. Hey, Bear. We examine these mysteries and more on the next episode of the Drew Grime True Crime Podcast, exclusively everywhere. But that just doesn't... Okay. May 10th, 2022, Apple officially pulled the plug on one of its most iconic products, the iPod. 20 years ago, the world's music consumption was transformed. No more clunky skipping CD portables or hissy cassette melting Walkmans. Through the years, we've seen click wheels, touch screens, many iterations getting smaller, faster, better, cheaper. The Nano, it could hold four whole gigs of songs. The touch was super popular. The shuffles looked small enough to be a choking hazard. Didn't even have a display. I never got one of those, afraid I'd lose it. But in the late 2000s, I did have a click wheel iPad. 
And that little gadget will always be synonymous for me with my trip to Shanghai when I recorded a couple video games. I was cranking music as I was walking the streets there, going through the huge electronics marketplace, looking at the latest tech, including many knockoffs. But yeah, I always hated having to tether that thing to a desktop to sync with iTunes. I didn't own a laptop at the time, so uh, I loaded up all the albums I thought I'd need to get by for the excruciatingly long flights and to help cope with a little social anxiety being in a strange new world. But memories, the dull, backlit, black and white display, the audible clicks as you scrubbed around your song collection. Yeah, we know the Zune was cooler, but it wasn't as popular, at least till Guardians of the Galaxy 2. But anyway, iPod owners who committed to years of heavily compressed music, we raise our glasses and toast to you. <coughs> and then promptly shove you in a dusty box of ancient tech somewhere in our hoarder heaven. Wonder if the term podcast will change now. How many podcasters or listeners know what the pod in podcast represents anymore? To me, a pod is always those things in Invasion of the Body Snatchers, or in 2001, a space odyssey. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that. <laughs> Conspiracy here from my top secret bunker in Barump, Nevada. There's so much sand here. It's coarse and rough and irritating, like you. Hey! But I digress. Here's all the news you can't use. Page one. What do you do next with a country music legend who somehow gets inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? You tell her to put some musical stank on a topic that you've never heard country or rock sing about. Mexican pizza, the musical. Meanwhile, crap artist, oh, sorry, rap artist, typo, or is it? Goja Cat worked with Taco Bell on a commercial this year. Viral brouhaha aplenty, and now we're on the precipice of 2022's Sonic Opus, dropping like it's hot on TikTok on May 26th. Mexican Pizza, the musical. Why not an off-Broadway production chronicling the struggles of the common man who can't seem to find a single ice cream machine that actually works at a McDonald's? Between you, me, and this awesome hairdo, I think it's aliens. Always aliens. They're constantly trolling humanity. I suggest we all order Mexican pizza on May 19th when Taco Bell brings it back and offer it to all the aliens in exchange for technology that we can then reverse engineer to make ice cream machines that work at McDonald's. Who's with me? That's rhetorical, by the way. Page two. You'd expect when a military veteran passes on, they'd be duly entitled to tributes, memorials, and R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Suck it to me. Family members of World War II veteran David Saunders were yanked of any honor and integrity after he passed away at age 98, after surviving World War II, the Korean War, and even COVID. His dying wish was to have his remains donated to science for research. But I highly doubt those terms would include the likes of being part of a live stream autopsy pay-per-view event. These bozos at the Oddities and Curiosities Expo claim that no profit was made. Oh, sure. That's about as likely as Dolly Parton getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and participating in Taco Bell's Mexican Pizza the Musical. This newscast writes itself, ladies and gentlemen. Page 3. Starbucks ruffles the feathers of many consumers, yet those consumers simultaneously throw their wallets at them on a daily basis to get their overpriced caffeine fix. Protesting can serve many purposes. I'm all about it. Spreading awareness. Showcasing the right to freedom of speech, or grabbing the public's attention by doing something stupid, as is the case for actor James Cromwell from Babe, and more recently, Succession. Seems like he likes some causes with his coffee. Cromwell is a known activist, and his latest stunt is super gluing his hand to a Manhattan Starbucks counter in protest of a vegan milk surcharge. The whole thing was streamed on Facebook, even. I'm still trying to figure out how they milk almonds, or plants for that matter. And I'm spent. That's all the news you can't use. Conspiracy here from my dump in Pahrump. That'll do, pig. Aw, oh, look at the time. The intergalactic boombox is hand-drawn in front of a studio audience, then thrown away because we suck at drawing, but are great at recycling. Select audience members are shown pictures of puppies and kittens to remind them of how much better life can be. And portions of this podcast are brought to you by Yuri Neri's Bladder Balm. Thanks for listening, guys, and if you like what you hear, tell a friend. NewPodcastApps.com will get you a Podcasting 2.0 player so you can enjoy this and many other value-enabled podcasts the full, enhanced way. And remember, work until you no longer have to introduce yourself. Or just wear a name tag. That works, too. Until next time, turtles. Turtles.